Are we living in a simulation? This is Thomas Campbell, a famous physicist, and he believes we are. He's so sure about it, he wants to prove it. Now, Thomas doesn't think we are the NPCs of the simulation, though. He thinks we create and control this reality with our own consciousness. According to him, the universe doesn't exist without us players at its center. So, in 2017, Thomas designed a series of experiments to test this theory. And here's the first one. Let's take a light source. The light is made of little particles like photons, and we want to see how exactly they travel through space. We take a barrier with two narrow slits in it. The special screen behind the barrier will show us the results, the traces of particles, so we can see what they did. We start and direct a beam of light at the barrier. It goes through the slits, as usual. But then, something crazy happens. If no one's observing what's going on, in other words, no one's directly measuring or watching what the particles do, and we only see the final results on the screen, they start to behave like waves. They create an interference pattern on the screen, a weird pattern right between the slits. This would mean that they somehow pass through both slits at the same time, as if the light were a wave. Now, let's try to actually measure and directly observe what the particles do. We place a detector or a measuring device near the slits. And check this out. The light changes its behavior when we're watching it. The interference pattern disappears, and instead, we see two distinct bands on the screen. It behaved like particles and went through one slit or the other, not through both of them at the same time. Now, you might think maybe when we add the measuring device, it messes with the equipment or particles. But nope, the detector shouldn't influence the experiment in any way. And yet, they do. Incredibly creepy, right? For some mysterious reason, when we don't observe the particles around us, they exist in several possible states at the same time, like being a particle and a wave. But when we observe them, they choose one possible state and change their behavior. It's as if the universe decides what to do based on the experiment we perform. Now, scientists still have no idea why. They've been trying to explain what in the world this means for over 70 years, and they still can't tell you. The simulation theory became one of many possible explanations. Imagine a computer running a VR. This computer has limited processing power, so it only renders details when someone or something is looking at them, just like in video games. The rest of the world is kept simple or not generated at all to create vast worlds without overwhelming the computer. And that's not the only creepy thing in our world. Imagine two particles becoming connected in such a way that they can know stuff about each other even when they're galaxies apart. This is called entangled particles. Even though they don't talk to each other through anything – no sound, no light, nothing – the state of one particle instantly influences the state of the other, no matter how far apart they are. For example, if you measure the state of one particle, the other one's state will instantly be known. This terrified Albert Einstein, who thought nothing should be faster than the speed of light. He called this spooky action at a distance. But what if we're running on a supercomputer? In that case, the distance doesn't really matter. The code of our simulation can update the universe right away. Just like the graybeards in Skyrim feel that you are a Devaklan even from their mountain. Whatever. And if all of that is true, then the Big Bang could have been the moment the simulation began. So Tom launched a Kickstarter campaign to test this theory. He raised over $235,000 to support his scientific team. He's established a nonprofit organization, the Center for the Unification of Science and Consciousness, or CUSAC for short. There are four experiments in total. Each one is basically a version of the double slit experiment. They test how and when exactly our reality is rendered. The first one checks what happens when a machine detects the data, but no one looks at it. In a video game, Details should load up only when someone is observing them. So, if they want to see if particles change their behavior when an actual human is looking at them, or when the machine detects them. The second experiment goes like this. They send a bunch of particles for a run through the slits. Let's examine that they want to record the results on red and blue USB drives. How particles traveled goes on the red drives. 
the final patterns they draw on the screen goes on the blue drives. Then they randomly destroy some of the red drives. For some particles, we know only what drawings they left, but don't have the recordings of their journey anymore. Now, imagine if the universe somehow realizes that we destroyed those. It knows that now we can't actually watch how the particles travel. And if this changes what drawings they left, it would mean that the universe changes based on whether or not humans are spying on it. Ooh, creepy, huh? The third experiment is crazy. It basically asks, can we predict the future? They looked at two connected particles and see if observing the first one will change what happens to the second one in the future. If they predict it successfully, it means that the simulation adjusts itself based on us and what we've seen. And finally, they want to find glitches in the matrix, create paradoxes or situations where the simulation gets confused about what to do. In a VR game, if you do something that the game's engine can't handle, you might get stuck in a wall or receive infinite money. Ooh. That probably won't happen in Tom's lab, but maybe something weird will happen, like a bug in reality. These experiments are great no matter what results they bring, because even if they all fail, it will tell us more about how the universe works. Tom's team started just recently. Their experiments are now being conducted at universities in Canada, California, and on the east coast of the United States. It turned out that the experiments are much more complex than they initially thought, even for experienced physicists. There are mostly problems with equipment, sensitivity to vibrations, and getting clear and publishable results. But it seems like they're getting through these challenges, and might get results pretty soon. All the updates are on Thomas Campbell's YouTube channel. Tom's work sparked mixed reactions. Some people are joking that if we live in a simulation, can't this simulation produce false results? Well, we should at least try. But the simulation theory isn't the only possible explanation. There are also parallel universes. The many worlds interpretation was first proposed in the 1950s. The basic idea is, maybe there's a separate universe for anything that could possibly happen ever. Every nanosecond, every particle changes its state in some way, and a new branch of the universe is born. It would work like this. Before observation, particles exist in all possible states at once. Kind of like a ball could be both blue and red at the same time until we look at it. When we do, the universe suddenly splits in two. In one of them, the ball is blue, and in another, it's red. This is called the superposition state, like with poor Schrodinger's cat, who is both alive and not in his little box. These branches can't talk to each other, or at least, we can't talk to them yet. And for us, since we seamlessly travel into a new branch every possible second, it feels like we're just living like nothing's happening. But that's just another one of many, many theories that scientists made up while trying to explain this. You know, the Occam's razor says that the most boring and simple explanation is usually the correct one. Maybe there are no simulations or parallel universes. Maybe it's just that particles are wave-like, and the measurement process slightly alters their behavior somehow. Or maybe there is something much greater behind our universe. So, what do you think? What do you think? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.